Good to see you this morning. Let's uh, stand. We're going to start with How Majestic Is Your Name. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Majestic is your name in all the earth. Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Oh Lord, we praise your name. Oh Lord, we magnify your name. Prince of peace, mighty God. Oh, Lord God Almighty. Thank you. You may be seated. Shine, Jesus, shine. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness. Shining, Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send for your word, Lord, and let there be light. Lord, I come to your awesome presence from the shadows into your radiance. By the blood I may enter your brightness. Search me, try me, consume all my darkness. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness. Ever changing from glory to glory. Nearer, dear, may our lives tell your story. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Play, Spirit, play. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. This is the day. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. 
This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. And let's join in the old gospel song, I Saw the Light. I wandered a slow, aimless life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, it's no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Just like a blind man wandered along With reason fears I claim for my own Then like the blind man God came back inside Praise the Lord I saw the light I saw the light I saw the light No more darkness No more night so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I was a fool to wander astray, for straight is the gate and narrow the way. Now I have traded the wrong for the right. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light, no more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside, praise the Lord, I saw the light. It's good to have the whole A-team back. Good to see everybody this morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're glad to see you today. What a beautiful day. August is here. How did that happen? I don't know. Four weeks from yesterday, guess what happens? Need I remind you, UNCC football <laughs> begins. <laughs> and I wouldn't mention it so early in the service, except for we, we, we're in need of more than a few good men. We need some good women. We need some good everybody. <laughs> uh, so if you can help uh, see Jamie Poe. Uh, today. We're glad that y'all are here today. What a good day to be here. Our Old Testament scripture this morning is one of my favorites, uh, Hosea 11, 1 through 11. Can't get the papers undone. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. The more I called them, the more they went from me. They kept sacrificing to the Baals and offering incense to idols. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took them up in my arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with bands of love. I was them, I was to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. They shall return to the land of Egypt, and Assyria shall be their king because they have refused to return to me. The sword rages in their cities, it consumes their oracle priests and devours because of their schemes. My people are bent on my people are bent on turning away from me. To the Most High they call, but he does not raise them up at all. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, O Israel? How can I make you like Adma? How can I treat you like Zeboam? My heart recoils within me. My compassion grows warm and tender. I will not execute my fierce anger. I will not again destroy Ephraim, for I am God and not mortal, the Holy One in your midst. 
and I will not come in wrath. They shall go after the Lord who roars like a lion. When he roars, his children shall come trembling from the west. They shall come trembling like birds from Egypt and like doves from the land of Assyria, and I will return them to their home, says the Lord. From the New Testament, we hear this lesson this day from Luke 12, verses 13 through 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or an arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said this, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night, your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. May God add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. And may we find, by the grace of God, the strength to live that world that word in our world, in our lives. May we pray. Our Father, we are thankful that we can come to you. We come as a grateful people, thankful for the opportunity just to gather together, to look at your word, to read your word, to study your word, to share your word, and to share with each other. We're thankful that you have called us your children and you will not let us go. Oh, Lord, how grateful we are. We're reminded once more that we are family. And we continue to remember Bob Hathcock in the hospital at Northeast as he continues to recover from open-heart surgery. We remember Larry Day also at Northeast as he recovers from finger surgery. We thank you for these two who indeed are a part of us. And we pray for your loving and healing hand upon them. We remember so many more. So many are hurting, so many are afraid, so many are lonely. We continue to remember those in our community who have so many wants. Oh Lord, help us to know what it is that we must do and how we must do it. Help us to be your church, your people. And help us, help us to have a sense this day of the very things that must be important in our lives. Help us to know what it is that truly matters. And so we come to you in the stillness and the quietness of this place. We confess our sins. And it is with joy that we rejoice that your love is forgiving and you forgive each one of us. Now bless us as we live out our lives in the sense of that love. In your precious name we do pray. Amen. Let's join in singing the bond of love. We 
are one in the bond of love. We are one in the bond of love. We have joined our spirit with the spirit of God. We are one in the bond of love. Let us sing now. Join our hands that the world will know we are one in the bond of love. May we pray. Our Father, these are our gifts we give to you. They come from our possessions. They come from that which we are able to produce that we have been given so abundantly. And now we give back to you. For we know that you will bless these gifts and they will be used in your kingdom. We know the things for which they will provide. And we are thankful that we can do it. So bless the giver and the gifts. In your name we pray. Amen. Prophets give us such deeply wonderful perspectives of life. Earlier this year, we have seen Amos show up in the lectionary. And Amos, remember, is the shepherd from Tekoa. And he observes life passing him by. And today, we, we have a passage from Hosea. Many people think Hosea was a baker, uh, mainly because he liked to use ovens and uh, cakes and uh, things in his image, because you speak about things that you know about. And uh, so uh, Hosea does that. Hosea also has a bad marriage, a really bad marriage. And he learns something in that relationship that God teaches him. And Hosea brings to the Bible such a wonderful perspective of who God is. In the passage that we read uh, earlier, they're very feminine images. 
for the most part. And it reminds us we like to stereotype even God and make him masculine or make him this or that. But the Bible doesn't always do that. God is more than that. God is God. Hosea reminds us God is thinking about the history of his people. And what a history that, that has been. Uh, by any definition of the world, we're all stubborn. You know, sometimes at a funeral, uh, I, I will, will say, she was headstrong or he was headstrong. And everybody knows, I mean, they were stubborn as a mule because they all laugh. And it's never meant in, uh, it's never meant bad in any way. It's just a fact of life. We're all stubborn. We insist upon our own way. The people have been stubborn. The, the, the more that God loves them, the more they seem bent on turning from him. Uh, we read in the Exodus, this beautiful passages, the people say, well, in, at least in Egypt we had cucumbers. Well, I like my tzatziki sauce like everybody else. Uh, but I don't want to be a slave to it or for it. They say, let's go back. And... History repeats itself. Hosea tells us something about who God is. God is gracious toward his people. He looks at these people and by all rights he should say, I'm through with you. I've had enough. You have crossed the line in the, the, line in the sand. You have done too much. You're, we're finished. Kaput, that's it. Nobody could blame him for doing that. See, I call God he again. Nobody could blame the deity for acting thusly. But no... Hosea, in the light of everything that he has learned in life, and God speaks through our circumstances, God gives us insight into our circumstances, God speaks through them and in spite of them sometime. Hosea says, God is not like that. He says, oh Ephraim, how can I give you up? How can I give you up? It was I who bent over and taught you how to walk. There's not much more fun in life than seeing a baby learn to walk. There's not much more exasperating in life than see what a baby can get into after he learns to walk. Trust me on this one. <laughs> but what a beautiful image. You just see the parent bending over and making sure that the child is able to grow. And then what does they do? They go over and hold them to the cheek. They put them in their arms. And what a beautiful, beautiful image. I will not give you up. God's grace is given. He's not going to give up on us. We may give up on ourselves, we may give up on others, but God is not going to give up on us. Now what does that have to do with this very strange passage in Luke? This passage is part of what we call the hard sayings of Jesus. Well, I, you know, I think that's sort of odd anyway. I haven't found very easy sayings of Jesus when you really get down to it. Somebody comes up, somebody in the crowd comes up and say, I want you to settle a matter with me. It is a matter of an inheritance. Red flags. Red flags always go up. And, you know, human nature hasn't changed too much over the years, has it? Uh, when there's some money or land involved, watch out. <laughs> And so the person comes and he says, I've got a problem with my brother. Uh, I want you to decide. This is not uncommon. Uh, a rabbi, especially a well-known rabbi, would be a judge or an arbiter. 
And, and so if you were having a dispute with one of your kinspeople, the best thing to do is go to your favorite rabbi and get him to make a decision. And the first one to get a good rabbi wins. Sounds like a good uh, reality show, doesn't it? First one with a good rabbi. So he comes to him and he, and he asks him this question about the inheritance. And, and hear it carefully. Therefore, I better get the right scripture. Oh, when in doubt, go back to the Bible. Tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me, which is probably a piece of land. Tell him to divide. Well, at least this time, uh, the parent is dead. Uh, the other time, they, you know, the son wants it win before the, guy, uh, the, the dad dies. Uh, so at least protocol has been served. He wants it divided, and he wants it. The only thing of worth anything is the land. It will be carried over. It is holy land. There's that sense of holiness to the land. And so he wants it divided. He wants it done according to the custom. Then Jesus answers him strangely. He says, first of all, I'm not going to do it. He says, who sets me up as your judge and your arbitrator? And he says, secondly, be on guard. Be on guard against all kinds of greed. Be on guard about understanding what is truly important on life. And what he's really saying is that you understand what your action is going to result in. Do you understand what you're asking for? Do you understand the consequences uh, of trying and seeking this arbitration, this mediation? Do you understand the damage that you're about to do to your family and to yourself? Do you understand that there are some things that are more important than land or money? And that's relationships. That those relationships need to be valued more highly than anything else, and especially that relationship that God has. God does not give up on us. He says, you're about to do something that's not going to ever have a good ending. And how often have we seen that played out in our lives? A family is not speaking to each other for years on end because of something that was misunderstood or understood too well and just festers over some thing. So he tells a story of a rich man who has a good year. And it's such a good year, he doesn't know what to do with all the stuff he has. Sort of a logo, of sort of a bumper sticker for that saying, he who dies with the most toys wins. Wins what? He doesn't know what to do, so he says, I'll build bigger barns. And the barns, I'll tear down the barns that I have, and I will build more barns. Now, who does he say that to? Sort of the key phrase here. He says it to himself. He's talking to himself. He's making these plans. He's not confiding in anybody else. He's not sharing his dreams. He's not sharing his concerns. He's all so self-centered. He's talking to himself. And maybe the only person to listen to him. He says, this is what I'm going to do. And then he goes out and does it. And Jesus says, the fool, your soul is being demanded of you this very night. Harsh words. It's not saying that, that he's going to die because of that. It's just saying that he's going to die that night. And 
what good is everything that has been so much to him? One of the saddest things that you will see in life is for someone to die alone. Alone. And sometimes it's because they have been so self-concerned and centered in their lives that they have forced everybody that matters away from them. And that's a sad commentary on human nature. But Jesus is reminding us, Hosea is reminding us that there are more important things that are not things in life. And instead of building barns, we need to build relationships. If we're going to build barns, maybe we need to build at least one barn to share. If you're going to grow so much crops, at least somebody should be been sharing with somebody else who needed something. That would have fit the picture. For if we care only for ourselves, this is how we end. Lonely. And what do we have? Nothing. What is it that we take with us? What is it that we truly possess? Or perhaps it's what possesses us. What controls our lives? What determines the things that we do and how we do it? The man came with a very simple question. He wanted what he thought was his, and he wanted Jesus to decide. And Jesus simply says, friend, how important is it to you? What do you want to sacrifice to get this? Are you willing to sacrifice your family, your life, your everything, and then what have you accomplished? Nothing. Think about it. In every parable that Jesus tells should speak to us in some way. What is it? That truly matters. How much is enough? What does it take for us to give up on one another? And how grateful are we that God loves us so much that he never gives up. He is the God of hope. He is the God of our future. He is the God of our present. Surely, surely, we need to learn what God finds important. For God so loved the world. And so must we, out of our hearts, out of our lives. And we pray. Our Father, we are possessed by so many things. Things possess our time, our resources. And too often we find that we are the rats in a rat race. Oh, Lord, forgive us. Where we find that we lose part of our humanity, our compassion, our concern. Help us to be more like you in your loving, caring spirit. Help us not to give up on one another, 
our own life. Help us to see how we fit into the world that you have made. A world that we have so often malaligned and sought to destroy. Oh Lord, help us to make it better. And we are thankful that you hold us close to your heart. And you renew us. And help us even this day to find such a hope and to live such a hope and to be such a hope. For we pray now in the one who came to show us what this was all about. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We close with the bond, of love. the bond of love. How appropriate. Our invitation is to know that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Our invitation is to be a part of our fellowship, our membership, to be a part of the family that is McGill. As we stand, as we sing. We are one in the bond of love. We are one in the bond of love. We have joined our spirits with Spirit of God, we are one in the bond of love. Let us sing now, everyone. Let us feel His love begun. Let us join our hands and the world will know we are one in the bond of love. Let's be seated for a moment. We've got lots of announcements. Chuck Broadway is our deacon of the week. After what? You need, I know, I'm impressed. I want to see how you do with all those names that Hosea throws out. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, I'll do the scripture and you do the preaching. <laughs> I got faith in you. All right, Chuck's our deacon of the week. Uh, in each Sunday school class, you see, uh, see the, the banks. Uh, I think $85 has already been collected. Uh, someone says, we don't have any change. We'll make change. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's just, this is extra. This is, uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, the land yap. Yeah, uh, that's the extra. That's, uh, well, this is just extra, and uh, we'll do it. Uh, CCM, we, uh, we have 1,000, uh, 1,250 cans already, but we're going we're to do 1,500, maybe 2,000. I don't know, why, why stop? You know, people need to eat, and they need it. Uh, this has been a hard year. It's been a hard summer, and we need to do what we can. So keep bringing the cans. The kids brought 285, 300 cans, so they tripled their goal. So, so if we tripled our goal, okay, I won't go that far yet. Uh, we need volunteers to bring, uh, with the help of the hot dogs, uh, uh, we got we to get Bob Hathcock back on his feet, but we got some volunteers we need to, uh, to replace there. And they, we need a Coca-Cola cake. <laughs> it's pretty good when we need to specify our desserts. And if you don't have the recipe, I think we're going to print it in this week's way. <laughs> it's a good recipe. I, I've even made that one before. All right, uh, Liliana's going to have the mobile mammograph unit here, mammography unit, uh, on September 12th. So schedule that appointment that, and let people in the community know uh, about that. Two weeks from today, we'll have Deacon elections, so remember that. We promote three weeks from, four weeks from today. Yeah, three weeks from today. No, four weeks. The 25th. Uh, so uh, that doesn't make sense. Today, the... Fourth, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the problem. It's not August 25th, it's August 28th. Okay. Don't believe everything you read. <laughs> All right. Uh, school supplies, again, are on sale. I'm sure we'll have a community in schools box, too. Uh, usually that first, this Sunday before school starts, we'll... Uh, recognize all of our school workers uh, and maybe that'd be a good day to bring school supplies to, to distribution so uh, uh, especially uh, we've over the years always thanked our public school workers and we will continue to do so I think now is especially a good year uh, to do that and let them know 
how much we care. So, all right. Any other announcements that I've left out? Kids did a great job last week, did they not? Appreciate them and all they do. Um, I'm ready for summer to be o- over. I'm, re- I'm, re- I'm ready to get to a regular schedule again and everything. Uh, Tuesday Bible study will start a week from Tuesday. This Tuesday. They'll start at Afton Tavern. <laughs> they need all the... <laughs> Don't you love me? <laughs> to, to say your Bible study starts at the tavern. Martin Luther would be very proud of that if we were Lutherans. But... Uh, <laughs> That group likes to eat there, and that's, that's, that's fun. All right. Anything else? Do you remember Larry? I did talk to him last night. Larry had, uh, with the diabetic neuropathy, uh, he got an infection in his finger, and he can't feel it. And he got to the point where they had to go in and lance it and put antibiotics. They was not sure that they would, he would get to come home today, but uh, do you remember uh, Larry and Martha? Our prayers. All right. Go in peace. Go in love, go in joy, but go, because God always calls us to go, because he loved the world, and so must we. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. You've been watching and listening to the morning worship service at McGill Baptist Church in Concord, North Carolina. Our pastor, Dr. Steve Ayers, delivered the message in the sermon this morning. McGill Baptist Church is located at 5300 Poplar Tent Road. That's right at the corner of George Lyles Parkway, exit 54 off of I-85. More information is available at mcgillbaptist.org on the Internet. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Also, you can call the church office at 704-788-1180. Thank you for joining us at McGill Baptist Church. We hope you got a blessing from today's service.